All right, guys, the lock I have for you today is this Gega, or perhaps Gigi, AP3000. This is a 5-pin Euro cylinder, and you can see the characteristic holes through the keyway there. Those holes interact with a cog piece that's about midway down the bottom of the cylinder. That's there essentially for our passive key control. However, it does present a little bit of a challenge while we're picking this lock. And let me show you what I mean here. If I take a pick and I put it in the bottom of the keyway, you can see I kind of start getting caught up about halfway down. And that's jamming right into the cog piece. The pins aren't this far down. So I can get past it, but as I pick, I kind of jam into it right now. It's got four pieces that stick out in a crossways pattern. We'll see it when I get this thing open. So that no matter what orientation it's in, it's got some part that's restricting the keyway. So I'm going to use bottom of the keyway tension on this lock. And what that's going to allow me to do is with the tension bar in the bottom, it's going to give me a ledge to work my pick off of. However, I had to modify a tool because if I take this standard tension bar, it only fits about halfway in and then it jams right up on that cog piece. So I just took one, cut it down a little bit and that guy fits right in there and it gives me a nice ledge to pick off of without interfering with that cog. However, if we come back around the front, you can see just how high up those pins are and they're pretty much right on my tension bar. So I've got to use the shortest hook I have. This is a Peterson hook number one. And I've got to sort of pry underneath the pins as I'm going through. So enough talking, let's get to picking this thing. This thing requires very sh firm tension because it has extremely strong springs inside of it and all the pins are very sharply and widely serrated. Alright, that was a good click on four. And they're all reduced diameter on either end, so they act basically as T-pins in every chamber. As you saw, the keyway isn't too restrictive. But having this, oh, there we go. That was pretty quick. Having this tension bar in there with the way that I have to have it makes it kind of tough. But we got it open. Let me go ahead and grab my tools here. This is uh, from Peterson. This is the Euro cylinder servicing tool. I'm just going to go ahead and gut the one side of it. And this tool is not easy to put in there. There we go. Alright, let's zoom out and get onto the table. And get a little better look at this thing. Alright, I'm going to use the front loader tool. I got to get the C-clip off. I would have taken it off before starting the video, but I had a little accident on the last shooting. So, I decided to play it safe and leave it in there. These ones aren't too hard to get out. Alright, and you can see the plugs are already starting to come out. I'm just going to set that down and get our tool in place so I don't drop these top pins. But you can, let me turn on the light here so you can see it. And you can see all those top pins retained in place by that tool. Slide that follower in there and pull that guy right out. Alright, set him aside while we deal with the plug. Again, zoom in so we can 
get a good look at what's in this thing. Now all the key pins are standard, I'll just drop these out real quick. We don't need that. And one, two, three, four, five. Let me arrange those real quick. You can see they're uh, a little scratched up in the bottom. Maybe you can see that. I've been picking on this thing quite a bit, trying to figure out just the kind of tension it likes. And that's what the plug looks like. And then we turn it over. And that's the passive cog mechanism in there. And there's a little stainless steel anti-drill ball. Let's see if I can show you how this thing works. If I can get the camera to cooperate. Got to zoom out a bit. There we go. See the cog in there, the four teeth that restrict the keyway no matter what orientation it's in. And we put the key in. Sorry. And it just gears right through those holes in the key. And it sits right at the part where you'd want to pick from. So let's go ahead and take that out. Again, there's no other modifications to the core other than that. There's the keyway. It's not too bad. Let's zoom in a bit more. And we'll go for these top pins. I gotta say, this Peterson tool can be quite a lifesaver when you need to uh, open a Euro cylinder from one side, but it's a nightmare to use. So I'm just gonna go ahead and let these pins pop out one at a time. Alright, this position five. And let me bring you up a bit and drop that spring. See how big these springs are too. All right, position four. And spring. Get out of there. Position three. Drop two. See, that's a steel anti drill pin. And I drop one too. It's not the easiest thing in the world doing this through the camera. Try to get these out without messing them up. Kind of bent that one a little bit. Inside of the plug, inside of the body looks like no modifications, nothing fancy in there. Set that aside, and we'll go ahead and get a close-up look at these pins. You can see they're all very sharply serrated, and you can see the reduced diameter on all those. I got it open pretty quick, but uh, it was pin 3. I was caught up on one of these bottom portions of the uh, the T portions of the pin. And again, here's our cog mechanism. Then one more look at the key. So that's it. That's all I have for this Giga, or GG, whichever way you want to call it. AP 
3000. Thanks for watching. Let's go ahead and cut this thing.